The Unsung Spotlight presents Haloti Nada, a longtime Baltimore Raven who never gets the recognition he fully deserves. Like all great players, there's not just one thing that makes him great, that makes him special. But Haloti's such a physical presence. I mean, he can he can be just he can just physically overpower anybody. There are other players in the NFL who are bigger than Baltimore Ravens defensive tackle Haloti Nada. There are other players in the NFL that are faster than Haloti Nada. But no other player in the league combines the strength, size, and speed of Haloti Nada. The only thing showing show you the height of Haloti Nada's career, you must show you the beginning. The two-sport athlete in high school played rugby and football and starred in both, but ultimately chose football. But here, we'll show you some rugby highlights to wow you at the size and speed of this man. Coming out of high school, Haloti Nada was heavily recruited by D1 schools. Ultimately, he chose the University of Oregon. Oregon presented him an opportunity of becoming a star, and Haloti Nada took that and ran with it. He ran with it. Although it wasn't very smooth, he did get to his end goal. Throughout his duration at Oregon, he did go through some ups and downs, especially his sophomore season where he missed it entirely due to an injury that took him out for the whole season. So he redshirted that year and was able to bounce back the following year. Seems like Haloti saved his best for last, as his final two seasons at the University of Oregon were his best. The 2004 season saw him rack up 46 tackles and three sacks. The 2005 season saw him rack up 55 tackles and three sacks which is also when he declared for the NFL draft. Well, well, now to a guy whose NFL career may just be starting. Former Highland High star Haloti Nata is leaving Oregon a year early to pursue his dream of joining the big boys in the NFL. Kathy Aiken caught up with Nata and has his story. Haloti Nata has the dream down pat. Not just the dream he's had of playing in the NFL, but of being in New York City on draft day and hearing the commissioner call his name. Sitting there on a the table waiting for a phone call and then uh, Oakland Raiders picking me. <laughs> Whether it's Oakland or Cleveland or as one mock draft has it, the Buffalo Bills, Nata is ready for the challenge. Football's always been a uh, dream of mine. Being, being in the NFL has always been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. A kid that moved to Utah at the age of six. A kid that grew into a massive force at Highland High School where he became a parade and Army All-American. A young man, when he went to Oregon with a 6'5", 338-pound defensive tackle, became the Ducks' first consensus All-American in 43 years. Then after his junior season, Nada was ready for the NFL. First, it was, it was, I, I had a meeting with my mom, you know, just ask, um, asking her if I should leave, go or leave, and she felt it was like time for me to go, and I felt it was time for me to go. I gave, I was at Oregon for four years, so it's not like leaving early, it's just because I redshirted. it. That meeting with his mother would be one of his last. Olga Nada died in January of cardiac arrest. His father Solomon passed away three years ago. For my dad and my mom, you know, um, you know that they're finally together, watching me together. Um, it just, uh, it just, just gives me more passion and fire. You know, want to be make them proud. And that passion is what prospective teams will be watching. It was a question when 22 teams spoke with him at the recent NFL Combine. Uh, they asked me about my. Uh, my motor and stuff like that and why sometimes I, I go hard and sometimes I go, you know, half and um, stuff like that. Just, uh, you know, I, I told him it's just, it's a maturity thing, you know, I just got to grow out of it. Hiloti is only 22 years old but feels it's his time to make the big leap. Time for his dream to come true. I, mean, I, just, I really don't let it get in my head, but um, it's just fun to be known as pretty one of the best in the Utah, um, in, coming out of Utah. And he Floody Nauta was drafted by the Baltimore Ravens 12th overall in the 2006 NFL Draft. Haloti wasn't just going to any NFL team. 
He's going to a team with a deep defensive history, with future Hall of Famers like Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, and Terrell Suggs. He joined and fit right in. All three players which have won Defensive Players of the Year awards. This defense was comprised for Haloti Nada to be a gap stopper, meaning in a 3-4 defense, Haloti Nada's role was to stop the run and to get pressure on the quarterback when he can, but his main goal was to stop the run. It took Haloti a few seasons to become comfortable in the NFL, but by the 2009 season, he was fully in stride, becoming one of the best defensive tackles in the league, earning five straight Pro Bowl nominees, two All-Pros, and becoming a Super Bowl champion in 2013. His best two seasons by far were his All-Pro seasons, the first in 2010, racking up five pass deflections, one fumble recovery, five and a half sacks, 47 solo tackles and 63 combined tackles, including 12 tackles for losses and 14 QB hits. He was a monster that season, as well as the, 20 as well as the 2011 season, where he racked up six pass defenses, two forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries. He also scored a touchdown on defense. He got five sacks, 37 solo tackles, and 65 combo tackles including six tackles for losses and eight QB hits. Those two seasons represented what Haloti Nada was all about. Hard work, being a good teammate, and a great run stopper. His final two seasons in Baltimore were still pretty good compared to his NFL counterparts, but not to the standard Haloti has set for himself. The 2014 season was his final season in Baltimore, where he only put up a staggering number of two sacks, which ultimately he's not really a pass rusher, but that was more than enough for the Ravens to let him go. In that offseason, he was traded to the Detroit Lions as they needed a replacement for Indomitian Su, who then left Detroit to go to Miami. Not his best season in Detroit, came in 2015 as he racked up three pass defenses, two and a half sacks, 15 solo tackles, and 25 combined tackles, which also included six tackles for losses and eight QB hits. Nada spent three seasons in Detroit from 2015 to 2017. And it was also a big switch for him as he left from a 34 defense, a 3-4, and he moved to a 43, a 4-3, which which kind of caters to a defensive tackle that's more of a pass rusher. Uh, because, mind you, they had Ndamukong Tsu before. And Ndamukong Tsu, in his younger days in Detroit especially, was a very good pass rusher. As you see Ndamukong Tsu now on the Tampa Bay Bucks, he converted to more of a run stopper, to which they also play a 4-3 defense. But in Detroit, they wanted Haloti to be more of a pass rusher, which saw his numbers drop drastically and wasn't as effective. 
So 2017 was his last season in Detroit. And that offseason, he was a free agent and he signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. Halodi's last season in the NFL wasn't his best. A uh, father time seemed to catch up with him. He played 13 games. He racked up one pass defense, one forced fumble, one sack, 11 solo tackles, 17 combo tackles, and four tackles for losses, and three QB hits. Gone were the days where Haloti Nada was demanding double teams and causing havoc for opposing offenses. But his presence was still there. And his presence will always be remembered as a Baltimore Raven. You need to give me a list of players that I should start watching to prepare myself for the draft. And uh, he talked about this uh, junior defensive tackle at Oregon that they thought was going to declare. So uh, I always ask, well, what game should I watch? And Eric will give me the games. And I remember uh, putting on the tape on Haloti. Now, normally it takes you three games, four games to you know, decide you know, where you think the guy should be and what kind of player it is. It took me about 20 plays. And I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, he was doing some rare things uh, on the field. And then so my uh, question to Eric is, this guy will never make it to us. I mean, we were picking in the teens. He'll never make it to us. And he goes, well, you just never know. Just go ahead and do your work. And so I did my work. And uh, so we're sitting there uh, in the draft. I think we're picking 13. And our good friend, Phil Savage, is picking 12, one spot ahead of me, OK? And Phil and I go back to uh, when I retired in Cleveland, and we both was working for Belichick. And so he calls me up and saying, uh, I know you want to make a trade. And I go, not really. He said, yeah, I think you know, because I got other people calling me to jump ahead of you. So very hesitantly, and I was very hesitant because somebody else was chirping in my ear, telling me, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, that uh, I made a trade with Phil. And I gave up a six round pick to move up one spot in the draft. Now, we had been pretty good in, the, in that six round uh, up until that point. I think we'd taken AD, we had taken Chester Taylor, so we were, we were giving up a good player, but we were getting a great player, a rare player, and taking Haloti and to put him on uh, the defense with the players that we already had. And, and I'm going to sum it up with this and then turn it over to Brian. Uh, another unique thing happened in the draft after uh, we chose Haloti. There are two of the most respected men in the National Football League called me and congratulated me on making the pick. And these are two men that I have the utmost respect for that were behind us and hopefully thinking that Haloti wouldn't make it to them. And they called me and said, man, hey, what a great pick, Haloti Nada.